Hi friends, anybody else uh, feel like they have more to learn about prayer? <laughs> I know I do, and it has been a cry of my heart for a long time. Lord, teach me to pray, teach me to pray. So today is useful for that. If that is your heart, if that is your prayer, we are digging into Colossians chapter four, day one today. I'm so thankful that you're here. Let's, let's pray and we'll read the word. Lord, thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you that you uh, long to just relate to us, to commune with us, to be united with us in heart and mind and spirit. Lord, would you please do your good work? Teach us to pray. Lord, teach us more about yourself. Use your word in the best way possible today. Thank you. Amen. Okay, Colossians 4, verse 1. Masters, treat your bondservants justly and fairly, knowing that you also have a master in heaven. Continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful in it with thanksgiving. At the same time, pray also for us that God may open to us a door for the word to declare the mystery of Christ, on account of which I am in prison that I may make it clear, which is how I ought to speak. Okay, so short today, short but powerful. And I see two different sections here. Verse one is kind of a standalone verse. Actually, I think it's a continuation from Colossians chapter three, right? Uh, a continuation of the specific instructions that Paul was giving. Like he had begun chapter three by saying, look, uh, seek, 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 um, <laughs> what is it? Seek those things that are above. Seek what is above. Set your mind on what is above. And, you know, if we do that, Here's what life is going to look like if we if we seek our wow, I just feel like I'm really bumbling here. If we seek and we set our minds on things above and we put off these earthly things and we put on the things of Christ, then he gave some specific ways of, of what that's going to look like in our everyday daily lives. And he got very specific of what this would look like in our homes. He spoke to wives and husbands and children. And he also touched on servants too. And I would put in there employees. Uh, so how do we do our work? How do we serve our earthly masters? And then here, he is speaking directly to masters. And a master is someone who has general authority over others. So if we put on our first century ancient Near East glasses, yes, there were masters and servants and slaves. Uh, but today, what does this look like today? I think it looks like, okay, masters are anyone who has general authority over others. So, yeah, you can take that for what you will, but I would say, well, we might call them bosses today, but we might also think about this in a home situation or in a volunteer situation. Uh, a master is someone who has authority over others, and masters are to treat others justly and fairly knowing that you also have a master in heaven. I think masters, bosses, those who have authority are to treat others as our master in heaven has treated us. And we can think about how has he treated us. Friends, he has treated us beyond fairly, beyond justly. Um, uh, to, to treat justly is to treat rightly, to treat fairly is to treat equality. God, our heavenly father, our heavenly master has treated us beyond justly and fairly. Uh, he is gracious. He is merciful. And how does he treat? 
uh, ha, let's see, what, what is the word? Yeah, treat. That's the imperative verb. So it, it, Paul is saying, look, masters, you must treat your bond servants, those you are in authority over in this way, like our master in heaven treats us. So to treat here actually means to provide, to give something useful or necessary to someone. So uh, yeah, you know, in a work, in a work relationship, that would be okay, pay, pay fairly, pay justly, take care of the needs of your employees, take care of the needs of those you are volunteering, take care of the needs of those in your household. Okay, so that's part one, that's verse one, that was quite a bit on that. Here's where I zeroed in on today because as I mentioned, prayer always catches my attention. Oh, I wanna to learn to pray better. And Paul says, continue steadfastly in prayer. So to continue steadfastly means to persevere devotedly. And if we think about what would the opposite look like, it would mean stop praying, you know, stop caring, stop praying. That's not what we want. We want to continue. We want to persevere and we want to do so devotedly. So I just wrote down prayer and then I put, my question was pray how? And so I said, number one, to continue. Don't stop, persevere. Number two, steadfastly, be devoted. Number three, be watchful. Be watchful, Paul says, meaning be alert. Uh, if you studied Mark with me, we, we just finished that up not long ago uh, where Jesus talks about this. Keep awake, be alert, be watchful. It all ties into prayer and being ready. All right, number four, pray with thanksgiving. And I, I pause to ask, okay, I wonder why Paul puts this in there. Why, why Thanksgiving, this act of expressing gratitude or showing appreciation to someone? And in this case, showing gratitude, showing appreciation to God. I think Paul is saying, look, don't ever forget what your master, what your heavenly master, what your God who has provided Christ, who has provided the good news, who has provided salvation, who has provided life for you. Don't ever forget. Don't ever forget. But remember, by continually expressing gratitude and having this heart of thanksgiving for all that he has done and for the continuous ways that he treats us, that he provides for our needs. So, I think having this attitude of thanksgiving, the conclusion that I came to is it keeps us from just asking things. You know, very quickly we can turn into me, 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 I, 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 like give me, give me, give me God. I mean, let's look, let's look at our prayer list, friends. What does it look like? Is it all about our wants and our desires and Lord, please do this and please do that and Lord, we need this. Or is it, is, it, uh, is it a conversation with God where we're listening to him and he understands our needs, he's inclining his ear, but we are just continuously seeking to walk with him, seeking to have our minds and our, the attitudes of our hearts united with his, devoted to him, devoted to his will, and then just being thankful, having thankful hearts for who he is and what it is that he has done and the ways that he continues to provide for us and to treat us. All right, you can see, I went, I pondered that a little bit. All right, and then last of all, I put uh, Paul mentions, look, at the same time, pray for us. Are we allowed to ask God for needs? Are we allowed to um, uh, make requests of him? Absolutely. And Paul gives us a window into what our requests ought to look like. Uh, 
pray for us. Friends, pray for those who are declaring the word of God. Pray, yeah, pray for our pastors, our uh, uh, missionaries, our ministry leaders. Uh, I would say pray for me as I declare God's word. Uh, pray, and, and then Paul gives specific instructions on that. Pray that God will open doors, that the gospel, uh, for the gospel, for the good news. Pray that God would open the doors for people to hear his good news. And that those who are declaring the gospel, and we all should be in our sphere of influence, when we declare the gospel, oh Lord, may it be clear. May we speak it clearly in ways that are understandable, in ways that are relatable. Oh friends, beautiful, beautiful word on prayer today. And then, you know, finally, what do we learn about God? Paul has some things hidden in here about who our God is. Number one, friends, he is a good master. He is our heavenly master and he is good. Look at the way he has treated us. Number two, it is God who opens up the doors for his word to be declared. Let us pray for him to open those doors. Number three, he is the good news. He is the one who has provided this good news of Jesus. Christ, the Son of God. And last of all, you know, I think implicit in Paul's instructions is that God hears our prayers. He is spirit and he leans in. He inclines his ears. He is living with us. So friends, let us commune with him. Let us be one with him. Let us be united with him in spirit through our prayers. Oh, let us not give up praying, but be devoted to it today. Let's continue the conversation with him this day and this week. Good stuff as we begin.